Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. But then that does not mean that God is not in a hurry to change your life. That does not mean that you have to walk out of this place tonight the way you came. That does not mean that the mantle God desire to rest upon your life. Listen, Bishop said something before I came up. He said, one word from the Lord can truly change your life. We have a few minutes, but may I request your dedicated attention so that the Lord would do us good tonight. Can we lift our hands together in one minute? And call upon the God of heaven to give us an encounter tonight. Please go ahead. Father, help us tonight. Let your word come with power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Now, God bless you. Thank you very much. Now, let me please request that you are very sensitive, whether you are an usher or not. If someone is under the anointing, or if I do request that you bring those under the anointing out, um, please do help so that we conserve time. Hallelujah. The ministry of the Spirit is such that no matter how brief the time he must be given the liberty that he desires to bless to lift to change hallelujah the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other even as by the spirit of god so whilst you are seated hearing the word um it is more than just your attention you are giving god you are handing over your life and destiny to him so that he will change so that he will lift so that he will redirect the assignment of the anointing that comes through the word is to check every aspect of your life and correct anything that is inconsistent with the counsel of God. So whilst the word is coming, it is important for you to understand what God is doing behind the scenes. So some of you will get up after this word and find out that that disease and that symptom is gone and gone for good. Hallelujah. For some of you, whilst you are here hearing the word, the maker of the heavens and the earth is releasing angels to your homes to your businesses correcting things do you believe that hallelujah praise the name of the lord very brief proverbs 23 23 proverbs 23 verse 23 i'm going to be charging our hearts tonight on a topic that i have captioned by the truth 
by the truth. The Bible says in 23 and verse 23 of Proverbs, it says, buy the truth and sell it not. Not only that, is that King James, if we can have KJV, it says to buy the truth and then to sell it not. He said, and also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Dominion in this kingdom and any destiny that desires a performance, advancement, and any destiny that desires to see the fullness of the life and the power of God, find expression through it, must understand the power of truth. Hallelujah. The Bible here gives us a very powerful instruction. He says, buy the truth. And then he says, under no circumstance should you sell it. To sell it means to part ways with it. When you sell a thing, it means that you value what you are receiving more than what you are giving. Are we together now? Now, please pay attention. Jesus in Matthew chapter 13, please give it to us, verse 44 gave us a very powerful parable matthew the 13th chapter and verse 44 we're reading to 46 he said again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field it's treasure but it was hid in a field then the bible says the which when a man had found he hide it and for joy that he goeth thereof goeth and selleth all that he had and buyeth the field look at this kind of a man the bible says there was treasure that was hidden in the field we are reading down to 46 and then the bible says that man stumbled across a treasure and for the joy that he had nothing else in his life mattered he went and sold everything to buy the field that contained that, that treasure. Let's read to 46. Now 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Uh -huh. It says, who when he had found a pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. What is so valuable about this treasure that these people are willing to sell every other thing they had to buy it? He says, buy the truth and to sell it not. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why certain destinies seem to excel, you find out that God seems to do business with certain people to a degree and proportion that is very 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 worthy of admiration it's not because god decided to isolate a few people and then to victimize others the factor that distinguishes men in this kingdom is the degree to which they have access to this truth this treasure that the bible calls truth please pay attention Dominion in this kingdom is not an impartation. Dominion in this kingdom is the resultant effect of the value that an individual has placed towards his pursuit for truth. Are we together now? So that which will distinguish two people, two pastors, two men of God, two business people, any two people are distinguished in life and destiny to the degree to which they pursue and they seek truth here the bible says buy the truth now i thought scripture would say get the truth it never said get the truth it did not even say seek the truth he uses a business terminology when it has to do with truth he says buy the truth are we together when it has to do with wisdom he says get wisdom when it has to do with other things he would say seek but now when it has to do with truth he says don't you come around the vicinity of truth without something in your hands 
In other words, the pursuit for truth will cost you. You must be, you must be ready to know that when it has to do with accessing truth, it is based on the law of exchange, not the law of pursuit. Listen carefully. When it has to do with accessing the truth, it does not come at the instance of your seeking it alone. It is a product of exchange. Buy the truth. And Jesus in the two parables that he gave, every one of those people, the Bible says when they found treasure or they found pearls, they went and sold everything they had. So don't ask where the money will come from. That parable told us where the money came from. The money came by prioritizing the truth above what you already had. Hmm. Hmm. Everyone who bought that field did not have the money. But because they had the hunger and the passion, they were able to bring that money from something else they had. Buy the truth and sell it not. Everyone you see who has risen in this kingdom by the privilege of God's grace must be a man or woman who has placed value on the truth more than anything else. The receipt for buying the truth is a life of exploits. Listen, when you buy an electronic product, they sign and they give you a receipt. They don't give you a receipt over what you are buying. They give you a receipt over what you have bought. When you carry that receipt, sometimes they may not even allow you go out of the mall until you present the receipt. Is that true? So the Bible says, buy the truth. Don't tell me you have truth. Show me the receipt. The life of exploits, the supernatural life, the invincible life is the receipt that you have bought the truth. Because the Bible says, my son, he says, pay attention to my words. He says, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy mouth. He says, keep them in the midst of your heart. Then he says, they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them and health to their flesh. According to scripture, we know that truth only resides in the word. The word of God is the exclusive compendium of truth. There is no other institution, no other material that sustains the rich capture of truth aside from scripture. He said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Is someone learning now? There are many believers who arbitrarily desire to live a life of kingdom exploits a life that brings glory and honor to god and brings glory and honor to them and then they ignore and neglect truth then they get angry envious and jealous at those who have invested their life exchanging for truth my assignment tonight is to provoke your spiritual appetite are we together to exalt your passion for the things of the spirit and your pursuit for truth above and beyond any mundane pursuit if in the next 10 minutes or thereabout i'm able to succeed in that then we have done a good job tonight buy the truth and sell it not why do you need the truth john chapter 8 and verse 32 john chapter 8 what is captured in truth why is it so expensive and why is it so important hear what the bible has to say about the truth please give it to us john 8 32 it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free do you know what that means i shall know this police officer and the police officer will open the door of the prison for me are we together so midwifing my bondage and my liberty is that individual in this case he says if you build a relationship with the truth the truth has the power to influence your freedom listen carefully that means without the truth you are in bondage you do not know the extent of bondage you are in until the truth arrives 
there are many people who are in so much bondage they are not even aware it is the truth that reveals by the liberty it brings is someone learning now the truth sustains the ability to bring freedom freedom means a life that is not impeded by any factor freedom means the liberty to be able to rise to the fullness of your prophetic potential financial freedom spiritual freedom are we together freedom in terms of your influence your purpose and your destiny ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free so we have established that the truth works on the law of exchange you are not going to come and just pursue the truth arbitrarily you must be willing to trade off certain things in your life hallelujah the concept of buying as far as our economy is concerned demands that you must have currency is that true yes if you tell me you are going to buy a bottle of water i know how serious you are by verifying whether you are holding currency money are we together or whatever it is that you will use to purchase so if you stand in front of the shop or the store or the mall all you need to do you may not even need to introduce yourself and tell them your name just bring the currency to the degree needed and the product will be given to you hallelujah is someone learning very quickly for the sake of our time i want to review five currencies there are five spiritual currencies that we use to buy the truth anyone who lacks this currency will never be able to become the custodian and the steward of truth and that means your life will remain impeded and will remain limited if you're with me say amen, amen. when the bible says buy the truth it then means you have to know how to generate the kind of currency that is used to purchase this great treasure that the Bible calls truth. Number one, very quickly. The first currency that is used to buy truth is called hunger and desire. Write it down, please. You will never be able to buy the truth if you cannot generate this currency of genuine hunger and desire. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 5 to 9. Is God helping us already? Proverbs 4, 5 to 9. 4, 5 to 9. Get wisdom, it says, get understanding. It says, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. We're reading to 9, verse 6 now. It says, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. I love verse 8. Watch this. It says, exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Verse 9. He says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver but you must demonstrate desire desire proverbs 18 and verse 1 he says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom the currency of hunger men who find god men who find truth men who find the word that builds their lives and turns them into signs and wonders are people of hunger and pursuit. Someone say hunger. Say desire. When you come into the faith life and your desire is passive, anyhow, if God comes, let him come. If God blesses me, let him bless me. You will never find truth. Are we together? desire hunger 
Go and ask every great man who is used by God today, including your father and the Lord, the bishop. They will tell you that the truths that have exalted them today came at the instance of this currency of hunger and desire. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Man of God, you will never find power till there is hunger. Hunger that is greater than your ego. Hunger that is greater than the desire to satisfy the flesh. Businessman, you will never be trusted with the grace to rise to the point of kingdom influence until there is hunger and desire. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13, it says, and you shall seek me and find me if and when you seek me with all your heart. Is someone learning tonight? The currency of hunger, the currency of desire. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 and 8. He says, ask. Jesus is speaking. It's a law. Ask and you shall receive. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. He says, for everyone. There are some blessings that may be for priests, for men of God. There are some blessings that may be for a few people, other tribes. But this one is for everyone. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Is that true? It says to everyone who seeks he shall find and he that knocketh the door shall be opened. You are where you are because you are not hungry and desirous enough to go to the next level. Believe me when I tell you, you are at the level of the anointing. You are at the level of the prophetic. You are at the level of your kingdom exploits because there is no desire. There is something called labor when a woman is pregnant. Are we together now? labor is when the baby gets tired and says my season has come to an end inside that womb i need a change of state and a change of environment and the baby begins to mount pressure on the mother and by an act of delivery sometimes the desperation of that child is so strong she may not be able to deliver normally and the doctors will have to bring in another way but by all means that baby comes out it says as soon as Zion travails that she's able to put forth a son. Listen, most of us here do not know that hunger and desire are currencies. Biologically, hunger is a sign of health. The first thing you lose when you are sick is your appetite. Is that true? So the moment you lose your spiritual hunger, is already a is a clear biblical index that something is happening to your spiritual life something is happening there is an attack on your destiny and your life the moment your hunger dries for greater level of levels of god's glory it means you are not ready to go far with god hunger those who are champions are known by the insistence of their desire are we together and by the level and the extent of their hunger. There are people who get so hungry when they go to the kitchen, they don't have time to check the color of the plate. All they want to see is their food. And they are so determined, the hunger can coordinate their focus. They will not focus on any other thing until the food arrives. The psalmist said for us, the deer pants after the water broke. He says, so my soul longs after you. Is someone learning? Mm -mm. The presence of God is free, but it's not cheap. The power of God is free, but it's not cheap. 
The glory of God is free but is not cheap. There is a price to pay. The price is not physical money. That is too mundane for spiritual things. Hunger. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Until you get to this state in the spirit, forget about business with God. You are everything. Listen. The jealousy of God demands that he becomes your exclusive obsession. If at any point in your Christian experience, there is any other thing that meanders its way to become a priority other than God and his purposes, you have aborted your potential for encounter with God. The jealousy of God will vet your desire until God and the things of the spirit become your ultimate obsession. I will tell you why many people do not encounter God. They have all kinds of passive desires. They have desire for fame, for money, for growth, to be a celebrity. Then God is somewhere smuggled in the equation. No, sir. You don't do business with God that way. Ask Jacob until he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. The Bible says when he was alone, for as long as there were other luggages with him, when he was alone, then he came. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said, what is your name? He said, I am Jacob. Thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. And the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him. The sun arose and he called that place Peniel. He said, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Can I hear me? Precious people of God, if you desire more of God, it does not come just by admiring those God is using. There must be a hunger that is generated in your heart. You want your songs to go to the nation? It's more than just composing a song. Uh -uh. The fuel for your influence, the fuel for your impact is hunger desire for God desire that drives you to fast desire that drives you to a retreat desire that drives you towards consecration currency number one you buy the truth with hunger and desire number two for the sake of time is someone learning tonight currency number two for buying the truth is the currency of meekness and humility hmm. pay attention tonight ladies and gentlemen please help two people who will shout now under the anointing i just saw the power of god we're going to be praying for people hopefully within my time is already gone but i just saw two people as i mentioned this meekness and humility i just saw light please when you identify them just you don't have to bring them out but just hold them right now it's happening right now two people meekness and humility meekness and humility help someone who will get up now and begin to run by the anointing just hold them like literally the power of god will pick them this is the ministry of the spirit don't lose focus over what we are discussing i'm just responding to the impulses of the spirit the bible says we are able ministers of the spirit let me have your attention, please. 
currency number two meekness and humility help the lady outside who shouts the power of god is coming on a lady outside this row by my left outside right now first corinthians chapter 8 please first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 pride has been the undoing of many potential champions please give it to us media let's work together it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything it says he knoweth nothing as he ought to know the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you the more I see your face, the more I want to see you, Jesus, more. Humility and meekness. It says, let any man who thinks he knows. You, you can already see the limitation that men place upon their lives by the pride and the arrogance that follows them over little little prophecy little sign and wonder little miracle little financial prosperity it is in the character of god to test you with little of what he wants to give you much of and watch your reaction can i tell you everything god gives you the first time is never the level he intends to give if God trusts you with a grace for the prophetic, that is only a test. I assure you, there is a greater level. But you will watch for the currency of humility. I just said the prophetic and I just saw an eagle. May that grace rest right now. I'm seeing the number seven. That grace for the prophetic. Let there be a quickening in your spirit, man. Right now, I declare and declare seven. That number. New streams of the prophetic spring up all wells in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Help them, please. Please sit down. Sit down. Humility and meekness. We have to find somewhere to pray. James chapter 1 and verse 21. Please take it high for me. 121 James. The Bible says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness meekness that means i do not know enough no matter how great you are using me oh god there is more no matter the revelation i know there is more the bible says that state itself is currency in the spirit many preachers have begged their growth because of the arrogance of little results many businessmen especially in africa are unable to rise when people come to church they are listening let me hear if i can gain one or two things whereas there is absolutely nothing working in their life buy the truth with the currency of meekness every time i go to god i don't approach him as a man of god I go with humility. Lord, thank you for what you have shown me. Oh, but there are virgin dimensions in the spirit that I have not seen. And while the world is clapping for you and calling you all those names, you acknowledge sincerely, but you know. Is someone hearing? Someone will after this conference need to go for a personal retreat and lock yourself and repent from pride. Repent from pride. Lord, bring me to a point of humility. Let any man that thinks he knoweth know that he does not know as he ought to. 
I will always give this example in a grading system there are many intelligent people and learned people here in a grading system of A, B, C, D, E, F if a student gets 2% and a student gets another student gets 10% and another student gets 35 percent and another student gets 39 percent who was the highest 39 percent so if you are to give the highest award who will you give 39 percent but who passed among them so the one who collected the award will rejoice that he was more than others not knowing that all who got f they will all stand in the same place this is the fallacy of mediocrity. Comparing themselves with themselves. The Bible says they are not wise. Is someone learning? The adventure in this kingdom is not who you are better than. The adventure in this kingdom is rising to the mark of the price of the high calling in Christ. So if you pray for 10 minutes, you are better than the one who does not pray. So you say, but is that enough to deliver that which you desire? Currency number two, humility and meekness. Is someone learning? Hmm. Let's look at one last scripture. Philippians chapter three from verse four. Please pay attention to this. Philippians 3 and verse 4. Help us, media, and let's rush so that we can pray. Now, watch this. You have to understand that the man who is speaking here is Paul. Paul the Pharisee and Paul the Apostle. A twin combination that qualifies any man to be an authority. As a Pharisee, a learned colleague, and now an apostle of the Lord Jesus with the attesting signs following though i might also have confidence in the flesh he said if after man if if after man thinketh that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh i have next it says circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of israel of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew of hebrews and as touching the law a pharisee next verse concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless next verse but what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ is that in your bible it say yeah doubtless verse 8 i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that i may win christ verse 9 it says and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is after the law but that which is through the faith of christ jesus the righteousness which is of god by faith in him uh-huh that i may know him who is asking to know him here a man who just finished reading his credentials a pharisee an apostle wrote two thirds of the new testament and here's what he says at the zenith of an impactful ministry that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made confirmable unto his death I don't know about you but in this school of the spirit for me there is no graduation mm -mm. Mm -mm. there is only promotion from one height and one level I continue to discover him every day and I continue to find truth like treasure let us return to the place of genuine meekness and humility currency number three is someone getting blessed the third currency that we use to buy the truth is called genuine connection and followership the third currency that buys the truth in this kingdom is the currency of genuine connection and followership 
please pay attention go back and listen to this teaching again and it will change your life the currency of genuine connection and followership very quickly a few scriptures proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20 let me quote it for the sake of time it says he that walks with the wise shall be wise himself that means you don't have to be wise but just walk with the wise and something about your connection will in the connection with them will influence you it says but a companion of fools that man is not called a fool he said he's a companion to fools and yet he would be destroyed in hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 the bible says to not be slothful but to be followers of them there are some them that are worth following when you follow those them they are able to take you to the place of destiny be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit or obtain the promise there are some them in ghana some them in takoradi that are worth your followership but it must be genuine connection proximity to the anointing is not connection no many people were close to jesus some were making money out of him some were using him for fame only few connected to him genuinely the third currency that we use to buy the truth alongside its lifting power is the currency of genuine connection and followership matthew chapter 4 please from verse 17 is god helping us tonight matthew 4 and verse 17 let me show you a very interesting scripture hmm. from that time the bible says jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand we're reading to 22 very quickly and jesus walking by the sea of galilee the bible says he saw through brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother coasting their nets to the sea for they were fishers uh-huh and he said unto them follow me what was the command follow me and left them a promise he says i will make you it's not only a fisher of men he can make you anything remember he's called the maker you know the testimony of the psalmist i will lift up my eyes onto the hills then he said from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the lord the maker so every time you see a great life the maker has met that life the maker makes men now the maker is saying follow me and i will make you do you have the humility to follow i will make you fishers of men what did they do 20 the bible says and straightway they left their nets do you see the exchange happening they had to leave something to follow they didn't carry it along they left it they left it there does not mean they did not use it again they placed value on the followership more than what they were doing 21 hmm. please give it to us 21 the Bible says, and going from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship. He saw them mending their nets. He also called them, last verse, 22 now. And immediately they left the ship and followed him. What was the result of their followership? Acts chapter 4, from verse 7. These guys followed him because he asked them to follow. They did not know that they were paying a price. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked. This was after the man at Gate Beautiful was healed. By what power or by what name have ye done this? Reading to 13 verse 8. And Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. 9. He said, if we this day be examined by the good deed done to the important man, by what means he was made whole, uh -huh, be it known unto you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, 
even by him doth this man stand before you whole verse 11 and the stone which was set at naught by you builders is now become the head of the corner we're reading to 13 neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved i want you to read verse 13 together it's a long reading but be patient ready one two read now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them what was the secret that they had been that was the receipt for that transaction follow me and i will make you follow me the price of genuine connection and followership is someone getting blessed in the parable of the ten virgins there were five who were foolish and five who were wise they were all virgins and it was not an issue of sin or righteousness it was an issue of wisdom or foolishness and the foolishness of the five was that they did not have extra oil and in helping their situation are we together yes the groom came and then they said help me please um the groom is here give us oil and they said no 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 if we give you we don't have extra he gave them an advice he said go to them that sell and buy there are those who sell not everybody is in need there are those who have been made custodians of dimensions and graces they are called them that sell it's an election of grace you may be struggling with the prophetic but there are them that sell you can go to them that sell and buy you may be struggling with your finances but there are them that sell god has trusted them with that understanding do you know it is amazing that when you find these people who sell in one day a captivity of years your mountain is only relative to you it's not a general mountain there are graces that can trivialize that thing you call mountain every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it challenges are not general no while they were shouting in the boat jesus was sleeping challenges are not general what is giving you sleepless night someone has accessed the wisdom and the light and the knowledge and conquered it experientially my church is not growing i am sincere go to them that sell and buy my business is not growing i am doing my best ghana does not seem to open for me find out someone who five years ago was under the bridge and with the dignity of kingdom integrity is now a millionaire they are them that sell can i tell you the pride of our generation is one of the reasons why we never the humility of followership i wish i had time i would have told you the price of followership followership is expensive it will cost you your ego do you think Elijah followed out of convenience? Read your Bible and read history. Elijah was a temperous man. No wonder the sons of the prophet were offended until they did not receive anything. Elijah endured. No man, you insult me, I will follow. Can I tell you? The price for followership of anybody who genuinely carries grace is not convenient look at jesus even the disciples said listen we need to talk we have left all to follow you what is our court in this and jesus said now i got you no man who has left this and that to follow me he said but he will receive in this life followership is not by convenience it's by revelation let me give us one more our time is up i promise you this is this is just this is just an exhortation we're just please sit down 
I promise five, but I'll have to give one so that we'll pray. The fourth currency <laughs> is the currency of faith. F-A-I-T-H. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Through faith we understand. Faith does not just give. Faith reveals. Through faith we can buy understanding with faith. Faith does not just give things. Faith ushers you to realms. Through faith we understand that the walls, the aeons, were framed by the word of God. We were not there. But by faith, we were able to purchase that information and to believe it as true. Listen very carefully. It will take faith for you to be able to buy the truth. Because in this life, there are no guarantees. And can I tell you, truth always looks powerless till it meets what it was supposed to defeat. For instance, the truth himself, Jesus, looked powerless on the cross until he went to hell the potential of that sacrifice was not seen on the cross it was seen when that scene changed and he went to hell paul was given that revelation and he saw the cohorts of hell bowing on i mean forcing him to bow down and the bible says having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public show of them triumphing over them in it is it in your bible and he went to Hades, the place of the dead. Apostle Peter teaches us and preached the gospel to them. And when they believed, he opened the prison doors and came out with them. Now being the first begotten, no longer the only begotten. It's in your Bible that when he resurrected from the dead, graves were open. And all the departed saints came with him and they walked through the streets of Jerusalem. Yet, the truth that defeated that lie of the victory of Satan hung powerless on the cross the truth of giving looks weak until you see what it does to poverty the truth of obedience looks weak until you see what it does to disobedience the truth of prayer looks weak until you see what it does to the realm of the spirit the truth of fasting looks weak until you see what it does to your spirit man the truth of revelation looks weak until you see what it does to your spirit and your mind. It is all by faith. How do I know I am changing when I've not seen any results? The currency of faith. By the truth. And he says, no matter the pressure, that means someone is going to come at the back end of your pressure to tell you, give me what you have and let me give you what you are looking for. Are we together? Yeah. Listen to me. When you get to times where you face challenges in your spiritual life, Satan will come and say, give me your hunger. Give me your passion for God and I will give you rest. Even though temporary. He says, sell it not. I'm wrapping up my teaching now. It is not only by the truth. The sell it not part is what I want to enter your spirit because there is a way you can sell it. You can sell it through compromise. You can sell it through complacency. Let us not be weary in well-doing. You can sell it through weariness. So there are people who bought the truth years ago in ministry, but now they have clearly sold it because we do not see that hunger again. Every time what you had is no longer with you you sold it and i can tell you the person who buys all of them i wish i had time would have gone to revelations 18 19 and i will show you all the many things that this she goddess called jezebel has she's a businesswoman she does merchandise with the kings of the earth and among the many things that she has she has oils anointings she has many things including slaves and the souls of men you know how she buys it she looks for moments of weariness give me your hunger for god and i can give you your house rent and you quickly like the foolishness of esau was a mystery 
that we are still, many people are still making that mistake today. Esau was hungry and he said, I know my convenience will come based on an exchange. Jacob, what is this to me? Collect my bed right and give me the pottage. We laugh at Esau, yet we do not know that this is a very massive weapon that Satan uses. Many of you have traded your hunger and your passion for God. Many of you have traded humility and meekness. Many of you have traded your genuine connection through offense. Many of you have traded your faith. Peter, Satan had desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art strengthened, use this same formula and convert your brethren. I've already mentioned the fifth key. I will not teach, I will just mention it. The fifth currency is prayer. Call unto me and I will answer. And in response, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We're going to pray. Has someone received something tonight? Proverbs 23, 23. Do not forget this. Buy the truth. Buy the truth. Use humility. The truth there means everything that represents God. Because when he came manifest in the flesh, the Bible says he was full of grace and truth. I will tell you what is truth. <sighs> Whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, don't only think on them, buy them. That is the truth. That is the most accurate definition of the truth. Everything that makes for this, it extends to the anointing, to influence, to all of this. So if you see men who are rich unto God, don't blame them. They have bought the truth. If you see a church that is flourishing, it was not by magic. No, they bought the truth. Everywhere you see results, you see the signature of hunger and desire. You see the signature of humility and meekness. You see the signature of genuine connection and followership. You see the signature of faith, Bible faith. You see the signature of of prayer rise up in one minute just one prayer for tonight and i have believed in a lie that's the prayer request that you are unable to help me but now oh lord i see my wrong Heal my heart and show yourself strong And in my heart and with my song Oh Lord, be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified Father, I obtain grace to buy the truth at any cost I obtain grace go ahead and pray grant me the grace restore unto my destiny the currency if someone pray call back the currencies you have given away by faith the currency of hunger and desire Restore it to my life. The currency of meekness and humility. Restore it to my life. I 
Someone is praying. Someone is praying. The currency of genuine connection and followership. The currency of faith. The currency of prayer. Lord, that I will coordinate these currencies to buy the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please let me encourage you. I want you to invite everyone in Takuradi to come tomorrow. I believe that it will be a moment of worship. And I'll be sharing with you another truth from scripture. And then we'll have the time to pray for the sick. But one thing I can tell you is these Egyptians you see in the name of jesus as surely as the lord god of heaven lives you will see them no more forever in the name of the lord jesus i declare that you are blessed tonight i release encounters supernatural prophetic angelic encounters in the name of jesus as you listen to these teachings again i pray that your eyes will be open to see and your ears will be open to hear in the mighty name of Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you